down in Montgomery County. I'm Randy Bass reporting in Gaithersburg tonight. Coming up, a look at the damage left behind as this tight knit neighborhood starts to recover. We're not done with this latest storm system. A cold front is crossing through. We'll let you know when and where we can see a few additional severe storms. Whether you're facing damages or preparing for a storm, we're stretching your dollar. How you can maximize on insurance policies to help you save. And celebrating an iconic neighborhood in the district. Incredibly diverse neighborhood, all kinds of fun stuff to do. How you and your family can explore that area for free. Plus, we're counting down to tip off at Capital One Arena, where the Washington Mystics set to face off against Baltimore native Angel Reese and the Chicago Sky. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And thank you for joining us on this Thursday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Tosin Fakile. The National Weather Service confirming tornadoes touching down several parts of the DMV. This footage showing a dramatic wall cloud over Highland on Wednesday. The National Weather Service sent several teams throughout Maryland and West Virginia to survey damage. Now this is what is left in a neighborhood in Gaithersburg. Really unbelievable video today. Officials confirming wind speeds exceeding 100 miles an hour on the ground in Gaithersburg. You can see down trees and power lines from tornadoes that swept across that area. And Tosin, this is video taken of drivers caught in the middle of it. The storm sparked power lines. You can see there blasted branches and limbs off of trees. This is in Gaithersburg, Maryland. We have team coverage tonight. DC News Now's Kevon Dupree and Randy Bass are in Montgomery County as cleanup efforts continue. But first, we head on over to meteorologist Damon Matson as we begin a DMV first warned Dan Damon. I mean, this is unbelievable. Yesterday, things escalated pretty quickly. I hope we are not in for the same thing today because we've had several warnings. Right, Tosin. Yeah, yesterday was one for the record books here in the DMV in terms of severe weather. We have not seen an outbreak like this, especially in terms of tornado warnings in quite some time. And here's a little bit of a recap. Again, all of the red boxes on the map here indicate the 20 22 tornado warnings that were issued by the National Weather Service yesterday and where we have that red that is all of the locations that were at least under a tornado warning at one time. A large portion of Montgomery County was included within that and within the climate records from the National Weather Service office in Sterling yesterday's 22 tornado warnings were the fourth most ever issued in one day by the Sterling office there and of course we are still awaiting the official reports here on the exact number of tornadoes and the strength of those. We expect to get those from the National Weather Service here within the next couple of hours this evening. But folks, yeah, we're not done. Unfortunately here, we are still dealing with the threat of severe weather here. We have a severe thunderstorm watch that goes until 9 p.m., mostly along and east of the I-95 corridors where that watch is in effect. But we also have Montgomery, Fairfax counties and the district included within this watch as we we are watching for a broken line of thunderstorms that right now is crossing through some of the hardest hit areas of Montgomery County from yesterday. People trying to pick up the pieces, but unfortunately we are still dealing with these ac active storms and the threat for severe weather. Nothing is warned at this point, but we have a couple of scattered storms that are crossing through Potomac down toward Rockville. That storm right now too is moving through Gaithersburg with some very steady rainfall as we speak. There could potentially be some gusty winds with these cells as well. The other off to the east East, crossing only where we did have that same tornadic storm in Gaithersburg eventually roll over only last evening. So that's just unfortunate that we are still dealing with some of this activity, but we will continue to track these and watch for any sort of severe development the rest of this evening and coming up. We'll let you know how much longer this severe threat will linger before we start to see things quiet back down again. That's coming up in your full forecast here in just a bit. All right, Damon, looking forward to it. We're going to head on over to DC News Now's Randy Bass as officials piece, piece together a timeline and neighbors pick up the pieces. And Randy, I see it's raining where you are. What's going on?
Yeah, Tosin, the rain has really picked up here in the last 30 to 45 minutes. Going to show you what things look like here on the ground in Gaithersburg right now. The National Weather Service yesterday confirming those winds got up to almost 105 miles per hour, really unlike anything most people in this neighborhood have ever seen before. Five people were sent to hospitals, at least five families displaced from their homes due to damage. Some of those houses nearly leveled, cut in half by trees, others left untouched here in Gaithersburg. Again, those 100 mile an hour winds sending trees toppling onto homes, downing power lines and crushing cars in its wake. The National Weather Service echoing just how rare this all was, leaving lots of damage behind, tracking that tornado from Leesburg all the way to Baltimore Wednesday night. They'll touch down briefly, they'll pick back up, they'll go four or five miles, drop down again, and do damage. It could have been a lot worse with winds of 105 miles per hour. Yeah, again, that rain here on site has really started to pick up again the last 30 to 45 minutes. It was clear, blue, sunny skies all day before that. Those recovery and cleanup efforts haven't been really hampered, though. A large crane is here on site working to remove tree debris from this house that was absolutely destroyed in last night's storm. Stick with DC News now all evening long for the very latest coverage here in Gaithersburg. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Randy, thank you. And several crews are also in that area cleaning up and assessing the damage. That's where you find DC News Now's Kevon Dupree, who joins us live. And Kevon, you spoke with several contractors who are out there inspecting the damage. What did they have to tell you? That's right, Mark Tosin. Crews have been out here all day kind of assessing the damage and clearing the damage brought by yesterday's storm. I talked with one contractor who says this is the most damage he's seen in this area in several years. Now, last night we showed you a large tree that fell in the middle of Peony Drive where I'm standing now here in the Deer Park neighborhood. And that tree has now been removed and the road Peony Drive has been opened back up for people to drive through. Now, crews have been working, as I said, around the clock to clear the debris and all the other uh, elements that are in the streets, in, the, in people's yards, and on the sidewalks as well. One crew member says this is probably the most damage he's seen in this area in the last 50 years. Now, earlier today, contractors talked to me about some of the damage that they were seeing as they were assessing some of these homes here in the Deer Park area. The kind of damage I'm seeing today is trees that have knocked over siding, siding completely off the house, and fallen on the top of the roof as well. So it's more siding damage I'm seeing than roof damage. Yeah, no, there's a lot of damage. We're seeing obviously holes in roofs from the trees knocking down. We're seeing windows bashed in from trees. And cleanup and assessment will continue throughout the rest of the day here in the Deer Park area as crews continue to clear as much as they can following yesterday's storm. Reporting live in Gaithersburg, I'm Kevon Dupree, DC News Now. All right, Kevon, thank you for that update. And we're stretching your dollar after yesterday's storms. Even if you're not dealing with damage this time, insurance companies offer another chance on maximizing insurance policies and saving on repairs. Industry analysts say homeowners should review their existing policies while documenting damage. And check your policy to renew your deductible if you're facing short-term repairs, consider price checking similar products before buying them and keep receipts, especially for any new items. It'll help you maximize your payout. And while insurers use their own adjusters during the claims process, homeowners may consider hiring a public insurance adjuster. Most homeowners are going to benefit from using the adjuster provided by their insurer. If they're unhappy with the settlement amount, they feel like it's not accurate, or maybe they've had a catastrophic loss where they've lost their home and there's a really high payout amount, that's when they're gonna wanna look more into getting a public adjuster. And business insiders say public adjusters may charge between five to 20% of your final settlement, depending on the scope of the work. In Maryland, the amount adjusters can charge is negotiable. New at four, state's attorney Aisha Brayboy says a former 31-year-old blackjack dealer at the MGM National Harbor has been indicted. Now, the woman identified as Jamie Smith is accused of carrying out a scheme with three players, which caused the casino to lose more than $43,000. She's now facing several charges, including embezzlement. Smith allowed players at her table to see cards prior to making 
uh, uh, decisions on what to uh, bet. She also allowed them to change their bets after the play had occurred and failed to collect lo on losing bets. Brayboy says money generated in casinos is paid into the county's education trust fund. If convicted, Smith could face up to 10 years in prison. And to Western Maryland, where the Washington County Chamber of Commerce hosted first responders to a thank you breakfast. Community leaders came together for the men and women who put their lives on the line in the interest of public safety. Awards were presented for acts of bravery and heroism over the past year. Some of the calls they responded to include suicide prevention, preventing arson, and safely rescuing trapped uh, people or animals, and that's just to name a few. Uh, every day, I think uh, the fire and emergency services, as well as the police officers of Washington County, do an amazing job on uh, what we have to do and what we put our lives through. We really appreciate all they do. Many times unheralded, they don't ask for the recognition, but they appreci appreciate getting it. And police fire and rescue units from South Central Pennsylvania were invited as well to thank Washington County for its help. A new tonight, thousands gathered in Bedford, Virginia today to commemorate the 80th anniversary of an historic game changing event, a day of remembrance at the National Day D Day Memorial in Bedford. Now, during today's ceremony, elected officials, dignitaries, and everyday Americans read stories from the brave men who stormed the beaches of Normandy 80 years ago today in one of the defining moments of the 20th century. In addition, the names of 15 brave men who lost their lives on D-Day were added to the plaques at the memorial, ensuring their sacrifice is never forgotten. And though the words are wholly inadequate, may we say thank you to our heroes. May we say thank you to your families. And may we never forget the courage that it took in order to demonstrate what America is all about. Bedford lost 20 men on D-Day, the most per capita of any community in the nation. All right, let's switch gears now and talk about something that will bring you a bit of joy, returning to sports. We've got a big night of basketball here in the district. Yeah, we're counting down the tip off at Capital One Arena as the Washington Mystics get set to face against the Baltimore native Angel Reese and the Chicago Sky. I'm all kinds of excited. Sports <laughs> director Derek Forrest, Derek Forrest joins us now in the studio. And Derek, the Mystics are hoping to get their first dub of the season tonight. Yeah, uh, the Mystics have the first of two back-to-back -back games tonight when they host the Chicago Sky over at Capital One Arena. It's big for two reasons. The Mystics are hoping to get into the win column for the very first time this season. And Baltimore native Angel Reese makes her return to the DMV. Now, Reese played for Maryland from 2020 to 2022 before transferring to LSU for the final years of college ball. Now in the WNBA, Reese is looking to make an impact at the highest level. She's currently averaging 10.9 points, 9 rebounds, and 1.8 assists per game through eight games. We're going to hear from Reese a little bit later in the evening. And as I mentioned, Washington looking for their first win of the season as they are 0-9 to start the year. The game between the Mystics and Chicago Sky is set to tip off later tonight at 7 p.m. over at Capital One Arena. Guys.